summer, I suppose. I mean, it's more colorful than these like gray space stations. Then you just know it's a great Zerg map. You know, often like the more colors there are, the better it is for Protoss and Terran. <laughs> what know. if there's something to that? That would be weird. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, uh, actually, actually, like the maps have been rigged for four years, and like on space station maps, Zerglings have extra power. People are getting like seasonal uh, depression disorders based <laughs> on like the mood of the map. Settles just lose their willpower to fight when it's too cold. I'm going back to iron, a blue flame. <laughs> Either way, Overgrove is going to be our fifth map for this super awesome TVT semi-finals that we've had so far. There's going to be Bomber versus Bolt one more time. And I hope that this final game is going to be good as some of the previous maps, because I think anyone who loves StarCraft must be enjoying these games. Yeah, to think that game started, by the way, with Proxy Reaper, and yeah. it ended up the way it did, that's... Yeah, that, that, that could have been really anticlimactic. Yeah. Maybe Bomber was just doing it for us. He's like, I know I can win right now, but... I don't know about you, but I thought it was. I, I yeah. saw five Reapers and a, just a handful of Marines and a, and a Hellion, and I was like, well, this, this should be absolutely over. But it was not. Let's go ahead and introduce these players. In the lower left-hand side from CM Storm, it is Polt. Polt, of course, the runner-up of Lone Star Clash 1. He's taking, uh, he's going up against the runner-up of Lone Star Clash 2, former Startail Bomber. Well, that, that doesn't work. Former player of Startail, <laughs> now representing Red Bull. Give it up for Bomber. <laughs> and Bomber did exact his revenge on Stefano earlier in this tournament. He had him in the group stage where he won uh, pretty handily 2-0. Mm -hmm. um, he's playing really great. They both are, aren't? again, uh, I know that sounds like uh, the generic kind of cast like oh everybody's so watching no, our shields are perfect look at, look at that storm <laughs> but in general while that is to a certain extent true casters should be super positive uh it's actually been nice these I, players I, are not slumping they are playing really no. really well yeah I, I think that's an interesting discussion and i think that's one we can have like on another day maybe on a rainy day because i don't necessarily agree with that because like if you watch casters real, shouldn't always be cheerful no not like it, it doesn't have to be overly cheerful like if you watch nfl do the casters always say that this is an amazing game no no, especially the former uh, NFL players. Oh, were, were they really bitter? Like uh, Theismann? Yeah. Okay, I don't know that. Either way, but these games have been super cool. I've been really enjoying myself. And let's not forget, guys, if you just tuned in, there is another semifinal after that. It's going to be between Violet and Jadong. That should be some really sick ZVZ as well. And then in the final, of course, we are guaranteed a ZVT final. Who doesn't love ZVT? Uh, any of these four players can truly win this tournament right now. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't know who's the favorite or who's the underdog. And have won many tournaments mm -hmm. uh, in different fashions and, and shapes. I think uh, Bomber and yeah. Holt All of them take the cake in StarCraft 2. They've been winning a lot. Violet, before his little hiatus, was actually a pretty big winner as well. Yep, won the MLG, won something else, and he also... Uh, uh, he won an MLG Invitational, didn't he? Yep, well? in, in New York, and he was the runner-up of IPL 5, I believe. That was yeah. a super stacked tournament, so... Violet also super successful, and of course, you know, Paul the Bomber, they've won so many tournaments. Jadong has been the runner-up of so many tournaments, and also He's won... He's won a couple, too. Yeah, I know. He won Asus. And he won the HyperX The HyperX one, Vegas. <laughs> Everyone laughs, but he actually beat MC there. I, I, really I know. Players. Yeah, the first was there, I believe. Either first or uh, Yoda. Yeah, something like that. It was yeah. a long time ago. The, the other pros. Was, yeah, I was there. Was Were fun. you? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't casting the tournament, but I was uh, doing the trade show with Greg. Oh. I was watching Idra beat up on like random players at a convention hall for four days straight. And as you can imagine, Greg was having the time of his life. <laughs> the time of his life. <laughs> Greg got so mad. Yeah, like, Greg, every, yeah. like the, 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 the purpose of the challenge before this game really kicks <laughs> off was that people had to survive for 20 minutes against Greg. Yeah. So every single game, you know, Greg markers up to the 10 minute mark, he kills them. But every single game, they lift up their Rexes and they fly <laughs> them to the corner of the map. So just imagine Indra, his face. That he, is like a perfect <laughs> hell for Greg. Yeah. Like trapped with nubs that are literally. I remember one guy, didn't he win by making a bunch of Ravens, then PDDing the buildings in the corner? I thought I heard that, actually. Hmm. Yeah, he floated all his buildings with like 10 Ravens and just made PDDs back there so he couldn't kill the buildings in time. <laughs> Greg, Greg, when he gets so mad, he says those kind of things with a smile on his face. When Greg is at his most angry, he actually smiles. It's incredible. I don't know, the game five here between these two excellent players. Uh, we see the command center already up for Bomber. The command center went uh, on location over here for Paul in the left bottom side of the map. I'm curious to see if his command center again is going to be so much later than the one of Bomber or if he's going to do it a little different this time. It worked out for him in the long run, but let's not forget that it was a pretty unique game and, you know, the openings were just different. The third CC you mean, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be Cloak Banshee again for Bomber. Uh, it's the one where, that it comes after the expand, so he's going to be safe against... Uh, an early cloaked banshee. That, that's what he's ideally hoping to face. But of course, 
we can see from Holt with just the one gas, there's no way, shape, or form that he's doing that. It's going to be Marines and Hellions, uh, even going up to four Hellions here. And I wonder if we'll see, you know, no, because with the Expand, he's not doing that either. We still haven't seen that really fast double medevac, uh, eight Marine, four Hellion drop. It's so powerful, but neither player wants to commit to just countering a a cloak banshee opening. Mm -hmm. This is just going to be probably four, uh, four Hellions in the natural and eight Marines in the main base over here for Paul. This is like one of the most traditional yeah. openings that we have. Uh, it, it worked against Protoss for a while as well before we had Photon Oath Charts. Uh, without Photon Oath Charts, this was a nightmare to deal with. With Photon Oath Charts, of course, a little easier, but it can still be tricky. And in TVT, it's still a pretty popular opening that you see every now and then. Yeah. It's going to be extremely important for Bomber that he sees this gun. And Bomber right now doesn't really have a whole lot of units, but he does have Widowmites. And I think this Widowmite might be able to get a well, look, no. Paul, how do you have these star sensors? That's so he sick. He does, man. He's really good. Six Hellions in total, by the um, way. It's quite a few. Uh, I will say this, by the way. It's not a Cloak Banshee opening for Bomber at all. The second gas is just to, I guess, kind of stockpile, but also allow him to make early tanks here as well yeah. as continuous Vikings. This is really interesting. Uh, there are a lot of Marines over here, but I think the Bomber might take a lot of damage. Will this Widowmine connect with something? Nope. Will this Widowmine that was in the main, he repositioned it. Oh, here come those Hellions. At least Bomber knows right now. Does he see the Medivac as well? Yes, he does. Uh, this could have been worse for Bomber already, I feel. Yeah, we'll see, though. There's still a lot of damage to potentially be had. The uh, Vikings getting shot down actually, as well. Actually, this is really bad. Pulled. And Paul yeah. gets them lined up, doing a lot of damage to the Harvesters. Marines even lined up with the SCVs. Actually, so much damage being done here. What? The Medivacs the did get picked off by the Vikings. And meanwhile, the SCVs are repairing these bricks for whatever reason. Uh, uh, that that's seems to be a good one. Repair. Oh, and the SCVs line up again. The Hellions get another oh. powerful volley off, I think. This is it. Oh, the tank's actually going to die as well. Yeah, this is so much damage. Uh, I think He's this down is just 40 supply. game over. Only 12 SCVs GG. remaining. GG. After a very long and crazy series, Paul will close it out with just the good old Hellions and Marines' quick aggression push. Ah, Paul chants in the audience. I don't know if you guys can hear that at home, but it's... He has some fans here. That was a really awesome best of five, and uh, that was the quickest game, actually. Yeah. the first time a, an early timing attack actually worked, but Bomber... He got caught relocating uh, the, the Widow Mines. One of them he, was just whipping. If he would have not have moved that one Widow Mine, there's a good chance that that Medivac would have fallen oh, straight in. Unless, yeah. he, unless he saw Unless he said, but yeah. the Viking was kind of hovering above yeah. it, so it could have been all different. But that yeah. would have been cool. Bomber getting a little bit unfortunate there. Pulled, of course, super smart move with getting those Hellions via the left side, you know, not getting hit by that first Widow Mine and also not revealing his hand too early. That was a really cool series, and uh, it's fantastic to see Paul, sort of a local hero over here in Austin, make it to the finals. And of course, Matt. Props to Bomber as well, played an amazing tournament and a really entertaining series. Absolutely, both players put on a really cool show. And again, congratulations to Bomber for his uh, top four finish. But and we'll actually still play uh, third place inside That's as a good well. point to make. It's going to be on the second stream. So if you guys at home want to check that out, make sure and keep your eyes there. But for now, let's get a word from Polt and Anna. What do you guys think of your winner? That was a long series, but that last game was very short. Tell us about what was going through your mind during that game. Uh, he used, including against hard game in TVT, every game he used same build order except one on Frost, uh, there are many Reapers. So I just countered him and it worked. It sure did. Now you will be in the finals of Lone Star Clash against, well, who do you hope you're going to play? Um, either of those players, Jadon or Violet. Um, they are both are very good, and they are very good at CBT, so it'll be very fun. But if I have to say one, probably Violet. All right. You've got your cheering section down here. You've also got quite a cheering section out here. There's a, a sign that says Polt for President. I think you're very well accepted here in the US. What has it been like with so much support and so many fans here? Um, actually, I recently watched House of Cars. So <laughs> well, it's not bad. Not bad to be president? Yeah. OK. Well, you heard it here first. Kevin Spacey, Polt, same thing. Uh, we look forward to 